Hello, hello, hello. This is Ellen, your baker chick. I'm going on a new bread baking adventure today. Today I'm going to try for the very first time a rye bread, pumpernickel bread swirl, otherwise known as marble rye. I've never made it before. It's just going to be you and me trying it together. So I have my two bread pans ready because you all know that I have three machines. I know some of you are thinking, I only have one bread machine, Ellen. That's okay. You make one dough, you freeze it, and then another day you make the other dough and you defrost the first dough, but don't let it rise. Then you can deal with it and put it together then. So in a minute, I'm going to put my hair up. I'm gonna put my apron on and I'm gonna throw my rye bread ingredients in this bread pan and my pumpernickel bread ingredients in this pan and then we will come back and see how that's going. So I'm gonna put on my little apron and we will go from here. Here are my rye bread ingredients. In the very bottom, there is water and grapeseed oil. You could use any neutral oil. I suppose you could use olive oil, but I don't know if it would give it a weird flavor. I'm not sure. I always just use grapeseed oil. You could use vegetable oil. I assume canola oil. I just always have grapeseed oil in the house. Uh, rye flour and bread flour, brown sugar. And you can see that I put the water in first, then the flours. And then on the right, right there, I have my brown sugar. On the left, I have salt. I put my caraway seeds here, and you can't see them as well because I moved the flour to put them, but there's some right here. And then I take my finger and make a little hole in the and the flour, and that's where the instant yeast goes. SAF instant yeast is the only yeast I use. I only use King Arthur bread flour, and I only use, I think it's Enjoy Life rye flour. Um, I get everything pretty much on Amazon. So I'm gonna get this bread pan in the bread machine, but I'm not going to start it until I have my pumpernickel bread ingredients in the next bread pan because I want them to come out, obviously, at the same time. Just a little uh, quickie thing here. I've started my pumpernickel bread and it caught, I've already have the water in the bread pan. You can kind of see it, there we go. And now I have my grapeseed oil. This one calls for grapeseed oil also. But since it calls for molasses, what I have done after I've measured my grapeseed oil, I've pressed tear to take it down to zero. And when I put, then I'm gonna put the molasses, which is the next liquid ingredient, right into the oil. The molasses doesn't stick or doesn't stick as much at least because it's with the oiled, um, this little measuring cup thing that I have. So it just works better when you're adding something sticky like molasses or honey to put it in with the oil if possible. And if you're not using oil, put a little oil in and kind of grease the sides and the bottom or spray it with a nonstick spray and life will be easier when you're adding sticky, sticky stuff. So here's my molasses and oil. Hopefully this doesn't make a liar out of me. It did not look at that. See how it just is a little slow motion there, but you get the idea. It's almost all out. And if I want to, I can get a uh, little skinny spatula to stick in there, but it's, oh wait, the drops are coming. So anyway, you get the idea of sticky and stuff. Okay, almost nothing, less to, it's just a drop or two. So that's good. A little word to the wise. When I am about to put my bread pan in the bread machine, I go over the recipe and I say it out loud. Water, yes. Grapeseed oil, yes. Molasses, yes. Bread flour, rye flour, whole wheat flour. Uh-oh, I forgot the cocoa powder so that I can still put it in. <laughs> uh, and I just did that. I forgot the cocoa powder. I was about to take the bread pan over. Thank goodness I remembered it's a dry ingredient and I stuck it in. Now, had it been a wet ingredient, you still can do it. See how there's a little seepage usually on one side, like right there. You just can kind of move your ingredients over and carefully pour in a wet ingredient. Not a big amount, but if it's like a teaspoon or a, a small amount of something, you can really do that. So now this is my pumpernickel dough. 
that I'm going to, or my pumpernickel ingredients to make dough that I'm gonna now stick in my second bread machine. And um, next time you, well, it goes immediately for you, but then I'll get the dough out and start working with it. I just want you to notice that if you haven't started weighing your ingredients yet, I'm, I'm trying to convince you that it's just so much faster and easier and less dirty dishes. These were my two just help water, so they don't even need to be washed. I'm just gonna put those aside. The only other dirty measuring utensils I have are here. This was for my oil and my oil for the first recipe, my oil for the second recipe and the molasses. Then I have these three little silicone things, one for sugar, one for salt, and one for yeast. And I measured my cocoa powder into this just paper bowl that I'm gonna throw away. This is all the measuring stuff I have to wash. This is it. It's a lot easier than a whole bunch of measuring cups and measuring spoons, and your breads will turn out better, I guarantee it. Learn to weigh. So the rye bread band brand is Food to Live. And I get it on Amazon. And this is a, how big is this bag? It <laughs> doesn't even say. Four pounds. Okay. <laughs> Food to live. It's a great rye bread flour, rye flour. So I have two beautiful hunks of dough, and I'm going to just cut them in half. I'm not weighing it. I'm being sort of lazy about that, but I'm going to try and make sure it's relatively in half. I'm going to put these two aside, some flour over there, and I'm going to need to roll out. This one will be for the swirl. I need to roll out kind of a flat sheet. This is a brand new rolling pin. I noticed that when I was rolling my flour with my other rolling pin, it came out thicker on the edges, and so I thought I would try when it was all the same. So I'm going to need to get this rolled out. And it's not shrinking too much because I think it's because it has whole grain in it. This one has rye flour and whole wheat flour along with the uh, bread flour. Gotta get it into some kind of a rectangle-ish form. <laughs> so, and now I have to do the same for the rye flour. So I think we're gonna come back and I'll get that done so you don't have to watch all that time. So I did call this an adventure because I have never done this particular one before. I have made cinnamon swirl breads that I had. They were beautiful, they were tasty, but they had some air gaps. And I'm pretty sure it's because I um, put too much butter inside. So I have rolled these out. Come on, come on, come on. And I'm going to get this over it. Again, new adventure that we're taking together. already bonding to each other so I think this is going to be pretty good and now I'm just going to roll it as tightly as I can and the good thing about rolling is when you roll you can kind of pull out and stretch a little bit not too much but when I do cinnamon rolls if it's not even, I can kind of roll and stretch. And I'm trying to take it really slowly, even though I'm kind of an impatient person. <laughs> Sometimes I make my husband crazy because I don't take my time. So I'm trying to. And then you notice I'm kind of squeezing Okay. And so I'm going 
to kind of pinch that seam in to the other dough as best I can. And the headless videographer that you only saw his hand handed me one of my bread pans. Um, all this time I've been using nonstick spray in my loaf pans, but now I'm trying the, uh, the parchment method and I've, I've liked it. So I'm trying to see what looks prettiest on top. I think it is this, Ooh, it's a little long, so I'm just gonna smush. <laughs> That's a good technical word, smush. And that will go into rice. turn that oven off. Sorry, I pulled a fast one on my videographer. <laughs> All right, and the next one, I'm going to get ready to braid. So we're going to come back and put this in a second. So along with this adventure comes more adventure because not only have I not done this swirl with pumpernickel and rye, I haven't braided anything ever, but holla. So this is what I think I want to do. I divided this is the other half of the dough, both doughs, and I rolled it into a big fat rope, and then I flattened it out just with my hands, and I cut the long way to get three ropes of each. And what I think I'm going to do, I'm gonna try it, is put these together. Like this. I've not ever done this before. <laughs> But you know what? I am not afraid of making a fool of myself in front of you. Well, I am. If it doesn't turn out good, I won't publish. No, just kidding. <laughs> but this is what I think I'm going to do. So I put the pumpernickels on the left, the rise on the right. different pan, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to start like this. I'm just going to keep the pumpernickel strands. Ooh, I think this is going to be kind of pretty. We'll find out. together. Figure that out up there. Push it all together. Sometimes my braids are not super uniform. That one's fatter. Oh well, it will taste good. I'm going to grab my bread pan. That's going to be kind of pretty. What do you think? <laughs> and I'm just going to plop it in a loaf pan. Could you bake it on a cookie sheet? Yes. Yeah. Now, I am finding it's a little big for my loaf pan, so what do I do? I just push some under. And pop it in. Ta-da! It's going in a slightly warmed oven to rise. I'll show you what it's like after it's risen, but before it's baked. So the videographer is getting a little artistic here, going in for the close-up. So this is obviously the one that I rolled, and this is the one that I braided. They have both risen beautifully, doubling in size. I have egg wash here that I'm going to brush on. If you haven't watched my other videos, I always use a silicone brush. The Strop pastry brushes of yesteryear would deflate my dough. They probably wouldn't so much with this dough because this dough is kind of a little more, uh, has a little more substance to it. But if it's a lighter, fluffier, all white flour dough, then um, it's a little more susceptible to deflating when you don't want it to just by handling it too much or brushing too hard. 
So, since these are both rye breads, and I gotta tell you, I've never in my life seen a braided rye and pumpernickel, so I may have just made that up, or actually, my husband, the videographer, made that up. He's the one who suggested it. So, anyway, um, on both of these, I'm going to sprinkle some cornmeal. Not a lot. It's more just decorative and gives a little crunch. And mostly falls off. <laughs> but anyway, that's I like to do that. And then some caraway. Never too much caraway. Ta-da! Or be like Emerald, bam! <laughs> Silly me. So the bread adventure is almost done. I'm gonna put these into bake and then I'll show you the end result. I just take, took the two breads out of the oven. They're all baked. They both look beautiful. This is kind of an end view of that one. End view and you can see this one, the braid and this one, see what that looks like and in a couple of hours I will be able to slice them both and show you what the inside looks like I'm really excited bye for now okay it is time for the big reveal I seriously cannot believe how gorgeous the swirl bread came out and the braid is pretty good too so I haven't tasted it yet but I have someone here. Will that someone taste it and see what it tastes like? Okay. My cousin Ira, yeah, do you want to be on camera? Sure, I'll take one. <laughs> He's Do you're I not getting one? butter. Just tear off a piece and eat it. <laughs> you're now officially on my YouTube. Tell me how it tastes. Mmm. Wow. <laughs> now does it taste like a pumpernickel and a rye? It tastes like heaven. Okay, and that concludes. More. <laughs> he wants more. That concludes the pumpernickel rye swirl slash braid episode of Ellen's YouTube. Yay!